and he wanted to express himself, evolve, and perpetuate these ideas for the new generation. So let's enter the classic 70s creative outlet for Stevie. Um, and Marvin Gaye decided to take control into his productions, like the first conceptual album, What's Going On? I think that inspired Stevie to want to elevate. And we, the public, we were lucky. We got albums like Music of My Mind. Then we got Talking Book, where one of the greatest pop songs that ever lived, in my opinion, called Superstition, was created. In, in fact, for me, it was uh, the first time I saw Stevie Wonder ever. It was on Soul Train. I heard him sing that song the first time. What a way to be introduced to Stevie Wonder as a kid growing up in Brooklyn, New York watching Soul Train morning and there's this guy up there doing one of the most brilliant songs I ever heard at that time in my life as a youngster. Then you had Inner Visions where one of the singles from that was Living for the City which is amazing. Feel, atmosphere captures the essence of how many people were experiencing life in America. Yeah, then you had Fulfilling This First Finale, which had brilliant singles like You Haven't Done Nothing and Boogie On Reggae Woman. I mean, all the Grammys he was accumulating in those years, you know. And then, of course, we can't forget the genius songs in the key of life. Yeah, you can unpack this album any way you want to. Brilliant, genius, innovative but it took him two and a half years to make. Quincy Jones said the album had a unified theme. It's subtle in its extended form, but it was a unified theme. Yeah, I mean, Barry Gordy said he put all his experiences in and put it in the songs of the key of life. Stevie claimed that it was challenging for him. It's impossible to cover all of what life is about. But he expressed it in songs like Black Man.